In this video, we're going to add the third and final aspect of our little arc welding particle system, being some rising smoke that will come up out of the point where the arc is burning. Now, if we take a look at what we've got so far, we've got our little bit of flicker, we've got our nice blue arc at the base. Now, what I'm going to do for the smoke is actually create a brand new particle system. So go to Game Object, Create Other, and drop in a new particle system. I need to make sure that one, this gets parented into our arc welding system, and two, it gets named accordingly. So let's name this uh, something on the home row. So smoke, like so. And I'm going to get this aligned. Now there's all kinds of different alignment tools. I'm just going to do this one pretty much by hand because I'm probably going to have to tweak it and get it kind of off its original alignment anyway. Now, just like before, we just start off by asking what are our problems? What's the first problem? One, this is again being emitted from far too large of an area. So let's make sure that our inspector is unlocked and then we can relock it if we so choose. Jump down underneath the ellipsoid particle emitter and take the ellipsoid size and let's try setting it to 0.1s all the way down the board in X, Y, and Z. And that gives us probably a nice initial size for emitting smoke. And of course our next problem would be probably for, you know, pretty obvious. We're going to need our smoke to rise. Now because you always want your smoke to go up regardless of the direction that the emitter is going, I recommend you use world velocity for that sort of thing. So let's set this to one for starters. And it starts to rise our smoke into the air. Very nice. Now a little bit of randomization would be nice to Now random is going to follow the rotation of the emitter a little bit. That's just kind of how it goes, but that's okay. Uh, for X, let's do uh, try point 0.1. For Y, we'll skip that. We'll set uh, Z to point 0.1 as well. And we start to get a little bit of spread to our smoke, which will be nice. And then I will add some random velocity in Y. Let's try point 0.3. So we're kind of moving up at different rates. Now, I would say our next big problem is the size of these particles. They're just a little too small. So let's jump up to min and max size, and let's try, oh, I don't know. Right now they're at 0 0.1, so let's try 0 0.4 to 0.8. That's a little bit too heavy, I think. So let's try 0.2. Uh, make sure you have the field selected, 0 0.2 to 0.4. That's not bad. We could probably go with that. It's pretty good for an overall size, but obviously at this point, the material just looks a little bit off. So let's make that our next focus. So let's make sure we still have smoke selected and our inspector is locked on the right guy. Let's jump down underneath our particle renderer, still using default particle. And I'm going to use the, one of the smokes that is included along with the particle setup. Uh, we will just grab the regular plain Jane smoke and you see how that comes in. Now as we start to spread out up at the top the smoke is starting to break and sort of separate which I don't really think looks very good so to fix that we can adjust the size grow on our particle animator and give these guys a little bit of growth and that's a little much let's try maybe 0.5 That's not too bad, the, but I mean, again, it all, each problem kind of leads into another one. Uh, the next one I would think is that the smoke just feels a little bit too thick. There's a few different ways we can approach that. Uh, one would be to try to pull back on our emission. So we could try going to 30 by 30 on the smoke. Just make sure you give the existing smoke enough time to kind of die out. And that doesn't look too bad, but it's still a little too dense. It's, it's hard to see through. So what we can do is go down underneath its shader and it still has the tint color because it's using alpha blended and we can grab the alpha and pull that down and start getting some much fainter smoke we can also use the color and start tinting this like if you don't want white smoke that looks kind of steam like you want it to appear kind of gray which I do I want to darken it just a little bit we can handle that here maybe pull the alpha up a little because we still want to be able to see it And now there's a, f a few other things we can add just to make it look a little nicer, uh, such as if we come back up into our ellipsoid uh, emitter, we can add random rotation. Uh, we can put in some random angular velocity, let's say 3. And that'll cause the particles to spin as they go up. And it's pretty simple, but I mean it works for smoke.
I mean, this really was like the quickest of our videos for putting this kind of stuff together, but I think this will get the job right. done. Right, it's all in the subtleties of the settings that you choose. That's right, but the cool thing is that now you can take this particle system and you can put it anywhere you wanted it to be, maybe even in the floor, uh, but we could maybe attach it to one of these columns, and sort, of, sort of frame up on it, and I'll slide it over here. Let's kind of get it right up against the edge of one of the columns. And you want to pull it out a little bit because that uh, the sparks are a little blue core there. I mean, if, if because it does kind of sit flush, it could be hard to see from certain angles. So you want to make sure that it's uh, sitting appropriately. And then, you know, just try out your game. And so now we have our little floating core and our little floating arc welding system. So, I mean, yeah, it's kind of a simple example. But it does show a workflow, and it shows to me, as far as I'm concerned, from playing with particles a lot in 3ds Max and in Maya, as well as Unity, and including other game engines as well, my favorite kind of workflow, which is just going by problem identification. Have in mind the final outcome that you want, and then just start from the basics and say, all right, what's one problem I can tackle? And then tackle that problem, and it just kind of branches from there, because each problem you solve will expose the next problem you need to solve, and so on. But that is going to wrap up this video. It's also going to wrap up this section on particles with Unity. So thank you very much for watching.